I want you to picture something. You're making your way through the horrible dungeon of fear and hunger, and you finally find a friendly cat. There's almost no friendly faces in the dungeon, and when you finally find one, it's a cat man. But in need of a friendly conversation, you talk to him. The eloquently spoken man will be overly polite and ask some strange questions for the situation you're in. He'll ask you about your day and say it's kind of peculiar how life works, right? Sir, this is the most terrifying day of my life. Well, at least he's a good guy, right? It's good to see finally a friendly face. Thank God someone normal is he. He wants kids. He wants you to trade him kids. More items. He will either take the girl, because he wants to serve his god better, more on that later, or he'll take the demon child you can create with a certain spell. However, he'll give you a claymore for them, which is like a really cool sword, so maybe it's worth it. <laughs> but who is this strange cat-faced individual? Well, it's a very, very complicated question. That is why I'm here, to tell you about the titular feline individual known as Pocket Cat. Before the video starts, this video took a lot of research and a lot of problems to go along with that because Pocket Cat is such an enigma. So I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe for more Fear and Hunger lore videos. Also, next week there will be a video on a certain masterpiece of a PS2 game that I never see anyone talk about and I wanted to make a longer video essay on, like my original videos of Fear and Hunger and Fear and Hunger 2. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Let's get back to it though. In Fear and Hunger 1, you can find a room late in the game of Mahabra where you can ask the new gods any question you want to your heart's content. When you ask the new gods about Pocket Cat, they will say, A servant of the trickster god, the moon. His motivations lie in a path laid out by the older god. Unfortunately, even we don't understand his mysterious ways. So somehow the gods hardly know about Pocket Cat. Well, good thing I'm smarter than the new gods. So I'm going to tell you about Pocket Cat, or at least who Pocket Cat is. In terms of Fear and Hunger 1, Pocket Cat is just a guy, or just some sort of random creature in service to Rare. However, Pocket Cat isn't just a normal guy who worships Rare, but someone directly influenced by Rare himself. It is possible Rare even just made him up, according to some books. So he's just a thing that Rare dreamed up, right? So that's just it. He's just a weird entity that's aligned with Rare and he might just steal children. Well, it's a little more complicated. You can find books in both Fear and Hunger 1 and 2 that describe him in fairy tales from long ago. It was a rainy day in the countryside just north of the forest of Merblin. Willem, the wildest child known in town, would stare at the raindrops behind the window screen. His mother would warn him of going outside. During rain, decent boys would help their parents with their various indoor tasks. Rain brings forth all kinds of dangers not otherwise known to little boys. Disregarding the warnings and without a worry in the world, Willem dashed through the bushes and ran deep into Merwood Forest. In the heart of the forest, all wet from the rain, Willem heard a slight panting noises from an overgrown grotto nearby. Cautiously, Willem, Willem picked through the leaves. He would not believe his eyes when he saw a finely dressed cat standing on two feet, twice as tall as Willem's father would be. The cat's back was facing Willem. Its hand was moving swiftly inside its pocket, while the two big yellow eyes gleed inside a burlap bag in great excitement. Suddenly, the hand movement came to a halt. Even if Willem was well hidden behind the leaves, slowly the cat turned its eyes towards him. In terror, Willem ran as fast as he could towards his home. The two glowing yellow eyes of the cat haunted him all the way to his home's gates. His mother was there to meet him by the front door. So you just had to go to the woods, did you? said his mother. You saw something you shouldn't have, right? Questioned his mother. And how do I know this? Willem's mother would go inside and get a little parcel with decorated wrappings. This appeared just on the door before you came. It was directed to young Master Willem. Slowly, Willem unwrapped the decorated paper with small mouse prints on it. Inside the parcel, there was catnip. The town of Merwood was in a festive mood. It was the beginning of the harvest season, and food was plentiful. Willem's mother and father were arranging a large party for all the big families in, of the town. Even some noble ones were supposed to show up from outside of the town. Willem had to wear his Sunday suit, the suit he would typically wear when he went to church on Sundays. Needless to say, the suit wasn't Willem's liking. Now, now, you know we need to make good impressions for the city folk, his mother would say. Why should I care, said Willem. 
Wilhelm's mother would pull him by the ear violently and say, Don't you understand our livelihood depends on these noble and the fancy? Wilhelm shrugged it off and nodded. It's important to obey your parents, after all, if you were to grow up even somewhat decent and moral. It is even written on the good book of our lord, the Bible of Almer. The party guests start coming as the sun sets. The festive people were of all kinds. You had the well-eaten mayor of the town with his wife who was so young she couldn't have been more than three years older than Willem. You had the Parkinsons from next door with their faces forever set on an expression of pure disgust. There were also many people Willem had never seen before. Especially one gay gentleman with a constant grin on his face caught Willem's attention. The man noticed young Willem. He winked his eye, even though otherwise his face was set on the same grin all the same. The gentleman gave Willem the Jeepers Creepers. As the full moon had risen at its highest and the festive people were at the most cocked, Willem noticed the gay gentleman gone. After a short search, he found the man in the backyard howling at the moon. This already made young Willem very nervous, but then the man turned his gaze towards Willem. His eyes were the same two haunting yellow eyes Willem had seen in the Merwood Forest some days ago. Suddenly, Willem realized the size of the man, for he had not realized it before, but the man was almost the same height as their house. With a cat-like expression, the man would say, Fancy meeting you here, young mister. After this, the book itself will come to life and threaten you not to say anything. You can find the same books in Fear and Hunger 2, however, it won't come to life like in the first game. Pocket Cat is anything but comprehensible. Rare the Moon God and the God of Tricks is not really known to create things that make sense. At least not for us to understand. Pocket Cat least of all. In the events of Fear and Hunger 1, like I said earlier, he will offer to take children off your hands for some very good items. Such good items that you may forget your morals just long enough to make the deal. What does Pocket Cat do with the children, though? Well, there's three things that would make sense. He could just kill them, which is very possible. It's also possible he eats them, as it seems in the flashback of Rondon. However, there is a third thing I'd rather not mention that is also possible. So, that all makes sense. However, if you bring him specifically the girl from the dungeon, the one that will eventually become the god of fear and hunger, he will take a particular interest in her, and surprisingly not for the reason you think in your sturdy little head. He will take such an interest in her that he will even threaten you if he knows you have her and you've already turned him down. Well, Pugzer, why does he take such an interest in the girl if not for that? Well, it's because he knows what she is. Or, it's better to say, he knows what she'll become by just looking at her. How? Well, like I said earlier, Pocket Cat is a servant of Rare, the Moon God, who just so happens to be the only old god who really hates humans. So the thought of some human little girl becoming an ascended god is very deplorable in Rare's eyes. So Rare would do anything, even sick Pocket Cat on you. But only Pocket Cat. And if the God of Fear and Hunger is that much of a threat in Rare's eyes, sending only Pocket Cat after you says something about how much trust Rare, the Moon God himself, has in Pocket Cat. Meaning this Pocket Cat is something wickedly powerful and dangerous. Despite all this, you can't actually fight him in the first Fear and Hunger, as Pocket Cat is in fact a gentleman, as he himself will put it. And it seems like it. If you talk to him, he will speak very gentlemanly. I imagine he sounds like Austin Powers. I've got an idea. That brings us to Fear and Hunger 2. In this game, Pocket Cat returns. And hey, hey, there he is, stealing a child. I know he's a bad guy, but man was this a breath of fresh air to see him. A familiar face in this horrible landscape, and surprisingly, he agrees with you. Saying something similar. He recognizes you. Not you, the character in game, but you. He will even reference real world events like COVID, saying things like people went crazy and bought a ton of toilet paper and stayed inside and whatnot. He then makes some commentary on the event and the world itself. What do you think follows such intense darkness? You can answer however you'd like. However, if you answer change, he will agree with you. The only thing constant in the universe is change. Quite the philosopher, Pocket Cat. As gentlemanly as he is terrifying. He will then tell you that these days he's somewhat of a head salesman. He will take part in this festival of Termina, which if you don't know about, I recommend you watch my video on the whole game of Fear and Hunger here at the top of the screen. But he will further incentivize you to take part in this festival to Rare. Although, spoilers, obviously this festival isn't for Rare anymore, but the Sulfur God. 
However, other parts of Rare are still in this festival, like Moon Scorching, so it makes sense that Pocket Cat is here too. Or if you really want to stretch it, you could say Pocket Cat has some relation to Sulphur, but I don't think so. If you meet Pocket Cat in the museum later on, he will tell you his philosophy on artists. He views artists in three types. First type, the kind that sees something wrong in the world, or just something in the world in general. Then they make art based on those things, whether they be unjust things like cruelty from those in power or diseases, and then they give their point of view through their art and try to make the change. Then there's a second type of artist. The type of artists that look inwards, and they try to make art based on what's on their inside, whether that be their mindset or their delusions. Then there's a third type. The type that starts an artwork and then lets their art go with the flow, if you will. They have no idea how the art will end up, but they just let the art happen. Now, as much as I toil on this little speech Pocket Cat gives, I have zero idea what he is referencing here. I understand what he's saying, mind you, but I don't know why he is saying it. It's clearly not just here so Miro can express his views on art. There is a reason why Pocket Cat is saying this in the greater lore. But what is it? If you have an idea, please let me know, because I genuinely don't know. Please let me know what you think in the comments of why he is giving us this meta commentary on artists. After all that, however, let's get to the hardest part to understand of Pocket Cat. How is he, or should I say, how is it born? You'd think it's just spawn like any other rare creature like the Manebo, but it's different. Let's talk about Moon Scorching. Rare's light has the power to turn you into something different. Some might say it turns you into something like the worst version of yourself, to quote a certain someone. But what happens if that someone is completely blank, with no worse version to turn into? Someone already completely at rock bottom. Well, that brings us to Dan, a playable character in Fear and Hunger 2, and, and someone, as we've just discussed, is at completely rock bottom already. As well as possessing the blank soul. If you want to know more about the souls and the birth calendar of Fear and Hunger and what soul you'd get, you can check out my video here on the souls in the Fear and Hunger universe on screen. So, Dan is completely blank and at rock bottom. So what does this have to do with Pocket Cat? Well, you see, when Dan moon scorches, unlike the other contestants who just crack and turn into some monster or some evil version of themselves, he turns into none other than Pocket Cat. Once again, you find yourself in the familiar pit of despair. You've tried to claw yourself up from this miserable hole time and time again. It's time to accept the inevitable. Maybe this was your home all along. You were meant to fall here all those times. Because, let's face it, you never quite felt right when you were among those smiling crowds, do you? You always felt like an outsider, like you were just a bystander spectating what life looked like in the sun. Like using a mask, you hid the darkness. But that fooled no one. Everyone saw right through it. They knew your true alignment and your past, and you liked it like that. You liked feeling different. You realize it now, don't you? There never was a mask. It was all you, baby. The pointy ears, the fangs, the wide eyes. That is who you are. A dirty, degenerate furry. Now take this mask and this jacket and ramble on, my friend, old sport. It's your time to bask in the sun. The mask and jacket seem to fit you just perfectly. Pocket Cat is not a who, but a what. I feel like it's almost like some sort of disease or some sort of demon. It possesses people that are at rock bottom. It's not a person. It's a cancer that sneaks into people and control them. Or perhaps there's a little pocket cat in all of us. I think that's a good point to end it on. I appreciate all of you, and I love you all. Bye-bye.